Hello, I'm Dr. Laura Sinberg from the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. Have you ever been in a rehearsal where the person on the podium made all of the decisions? Where your voice was silent and your opinions were unheard? Where perhaps you drifted in and out of attentiveness? I'm going to talk today about decentralizing the power of the podium, something for you to consider as a future teacher. I'd like to provoke some thought about getting everyone engaged, really engaged, and fully participating in the ensemble. These ideas may seem like a stretch from what you're used to, but I hope you enjoy the ride as we think about how you can create a more inclusive and comprehensive musical experience for your future students. So I've organized this talk into four chunks. First, a little bit of background, what I mean by power of the podium. Second, looking at a different kind of model for band, choir, and orchestra. Third, some steps for implementing inclusive practices and ideas. And fourth, some thoughts about supporting you when things get tough. In our collegiate ensembles, the musical demands are very intense and the pace is very, very fast. There are many concerts to prepare, there's very difficult repertoire to perfect, and there's seldom space to yield the podium. As we recall our school ensembles and our school experiences, there tends to be very often a strong resemblance to this collegiate model, where the person on the podium is making decisions about how something should be performed and interpreted. These podium-centric traditions are firmly established. They're practically set in stone. But in my view, they are not in the best interest of our students in our, K in our secondary music ensembles. We need to pursue our work there as teachers engaged in student-centered ensemble rehearsal practices, and we need to help our students understand that music is much more than notes and rhythms on a page. So what would this look like? Let's imagine a different model illustrated through a short vignette. We are rehearsing The Stars and Stripes Forever by John Philip Sousa, a march that many are familiar with, and I ask students to identify sections that need work. What is wrong with our, our performance? Someone says, the articulation is not clear enough. Another says, there's not enough dynamic contrast in our performance. Or, the trombones are not loud enough, so the balance is wrong. I ask students, well, how will we fix it? They offer suggestions. Play it again and listen to the balance of the trombones. Can everybody hear the trombones? Then I ask, did we fix it? Some students say yes, it sounds just fine. Other students may say no, we still need to work on it. I ask, what else do we need to work on? A student offers, we should play it faster. In this process, in this model, the students are invited to listen, to diagnose, to, and to evaluate the quality of their work. They offer suggestions for improvement, rather than the suggestions and the prescriptions coming from me. So how do we get to this point? And now the real brain stretching begins. We start by looking at the score. Not in relation to conducting gestures, but from a more pedagogical perspective. What does this piece teach? What is in this piece? How can we engage the students in learning and understanding this music? So for instance, let's return to the Stars and Stripes forever. We go about the process of learning the notes, we learn the rhythms. I look at the music again and I consider patriotism. What if I ask my students how they came to know this piece? What if I ask them why is it so often linked to patriotism? Why do we hear it on the 4th of July every year? Why is it constantly present at ceremonial functions? What if I ask my students to talk about what it means to be patriotic knowing that there may be countless ways of thinking about this notion of patriotism. I ask the students to talk about what it means to be patriotic. And they share their opinions and their points of view. We play the piece again and I ask, was that different? Was it different that time? In these examples, I ask a lot of questions of my students because I want them to think, all of them. I want them to understand the music, how it is put together, what it's about, everything. In my experience, the music sounds better when we all understand it. And it begins by looking at the score. Now, as someone preparing to be a teacher, these ideas may sound unfamiliar to you and perhaps scary. 
or even impossible. It's not just what we are used to. So let's talk about how we might resolve these concerns. What do we do when fear kicks in? It can be scary to try something new. This is hard, heavy lifting, but you can do it. It's okay to take a risk not knowing what will happen. For this, we have a great tool, the 3x5 index card. Hand out an index card and ask students questions about the music. Students will be more comfortable responding on a card, perhaps, than raising their hand. Especially when you're starting something new and you're asking them what they think for the very first time. Each and every student responds. They have a voice. Over time, they will become much more accustomed to expressing their point of view in writing and in front of their peers. There are several resources to help you. You can post a question on the blog, and I'll look forward to seeing what wonderments you have in relation to these ideas. There are a couple of books that are available to you. One I recently wrote uh, two years ago called Just Good Teaching, Comprehensive Musicianship Through performance in theory and practice. There's another book that I helped write called Shaping Sound Musicians. These are wonderful resources. We all want our students to perform at a high musical level. I envision something more. Understanding the music through performing it. And there is a name for this. Comprehensive Musicianship Through Performance, or CMP. Teachers plan in order to get students more involved in the decision making of the rehearsal through this model. Our students do know a lot about music, and they are capable of thinking very deeply about how music makes them feel. So we need to bring them into the process. This has always been my hope for my students.